the Forty OT podcast. You know, for, for for me, that 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 alexithymia was 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 massive in in terms of sort of putting a, a blocker on my ability to 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 feel and to, to connect events with emotions and to to do all of that things. And I, you know, when I was younger, I used to think I had multiple personalities. You know, I <laughs> because my outward you know i'd notice now and again and sort of bring myself back and sort of observe myself you know for, for, for your information now it's it's different emotional states but i thought i was having different personalities and i labeled them with different colors i was like yeah i'm feeling a bit red today which will obviously i was just angry but i thought that just be, because my the way that i was talking and the way that I was behaving and the things that I was thinking about were so different. I was like, I can't be the same person. Like it's, <laughs> that, that disconnect was just crazy. And, and me not knowing much about autism, much about alexithymia, I was trying to do all these really crazy roundabout ways of, of understanding my environment from that sort of logical understanding <laughs> it was it was a funny time it was let's say that at least you were recognizing that you did feel differently mm. sometimes one of the barriers for people um, especially in in the case of alexithymia is i'm trying to check in with how i feel and i actually have no idea <laughs> for me i'm sometimes able to do that it's kind of weird. I, I did a video on what I, I called it emotional damping because mm. I've got like spring damping, not equations, well, equations as well, but like the, the graphs and things from my mechanical engineering days. And I'm like, well, my damping coefficient on my emotions is really high. Anyway, so what basically what that's, that means. It's <laughs> really in interesting you say because a lot of the ways that I try and explain Alex Fimey to people who don't understand it, you know, like, Obviously, like it's really useful in interpersonal relationships with like romantic partners and, and things of that nature. Like for me, there's I, I try and describe it like most people can tell when they're twenty percent angry or something. They can sort of feel it. They they know that it's there. They can see it in their behavior. Whereas for me, it might be like sixty, seventy, eighty percent angry. And by the time that it gets to that point, it's overwhelming. It hits me all at once. I have a shutdown. I have a meltdown. I go off in a huff and, and have a paddy about it. But up until that point, it's, it's really just a feeling that something's not really good and my body feels a bit weird. Good day, viewers and listeners. Apologies for my very rude interruption to our regularly scheduled broadcast. I just want to remind you that if you have enjoyed the podcast thus far, please make sure to rate, subscribe, like, comment, and share. All of these actions are pretty much the lifeblood of a small, independent creator like myself, and it will help me get most of my work, more of my work, to people who really need it. If you want to stay up to date with my life, get behind-the-scenes content, check out my daily blogs, head over to the Instagram, at Thomas Henley UK. You'll find a link to that down in the description, alongside my range of neurodiversity clothing, just like this strong, powerful autistic hoodie that I love so much. And my website, of course, where you can find a contact email to book me for one-to-one -one autism coaching, interviews, workplace training, and speaking. So, thank you very much for listening to this very annoying self-advert, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Whew. Do you have that experience? I don't, I don't know if you have the experience sometimes of not realizing until later. So something yes, will happen yeah. and there'll be a mm -hmm. bit of a delay. And it's almost like all of the sort of appropriate emotions, all of the things that I could have felt immediately, I feel nothing for the moment. And then a little bit later, it might be five minutes. It might be a day. It might be a year. <laughs> Suddenly they all hit me later on mm. and that is 
fantastically useful for dealing with crisis situations <laughs> because I don't get overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm I assuming that's sarcasm. Straight. No, no, no. It's actually really useful uh, because when something big happens, then I can stay focused and I can do what I need to do and I can make good decisions. Uh... And then it's not till later that all of the emotions come up and it gets overwhelming. Some people yeah. get scared or feel unsafe or something and they just lose their ability to think clearly. Whereas for me, I can usually keep my ability to, to stay conscious and think clearly a lot longer than, than most people. The downside is that it makes it harder to react instantly and emotionally and hmm. uh, in an appropriate kind of way. Which yeah, someone, someone tells you, oh, my, my, da my dad's died, and you're like... Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Like, uh, whereas in relationships, people need you to respond in the first quarter of a second <laughs> for them to feel like you care, for example. Yeah. Hmm. So it, it can come up as a, as a challenge in relationships. I honestly, I've, I've never thought about the, the crisis situation thing. So I, I think there's been, you know, I'd say, I'd say there's been a few times in the past where that's been the case. You know, I kind of go into this, this weird sort of, I, I, I get like sort of a bit zoned out, but I'm sort of fixed on like, cognitively understanding what's going on and trying to get a solution and then you're like as you said like you know i'll have a shower or something like a few hours later after this event i'll just be like oh my god this is intense and like <laughs> you know like breaking down I'm, I'm gonna cry and you know it's i, th I think as well it's it, it can be hard interpersonally when when it comes to things like arguments as well because any situation where you're sort of the 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 it's it's lim it any situation where emotions are heightened for for one person or for both parties um being able to really understand how that person's words or that person's emotions make you feel and then respond to that it's quite important to do that but you know, a lot, a lot of the time, it's it's not something that I can personally do. So I, I need like a, you know, an, an hour or two, or I need like a couple of days where I can go, I can go back, I can really think about it, write down my thoughts, try and think about how I felt in that moment. I feel, yeah, definitely like inter interpersonally, especially in, in sort of romantic relationships, it can it can be hard to navigate, especially when you don't know that it's there and that it's that mm. it's something that not everyone experiences and they don't understand it or they, they choose to ignore it. <laughs> and part of the goal of emotional intelligence training is to sort of re reduce that lag time so mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you're having a conversation and someone says something that you find inappropriate or offensive or something or, or or they you know and instead of going or instead of saying okay and going along with it and then the next day or the next week going hang on a minute I wasn't really happy there you can yeah, say yeah. something in the moment and say actually how I feel at the moment is I would prefer not to go out to dinner right now I actually am sure. a bit tired I'm going to go home Wow. And, and instead of it just helps making choices in the moment, it helps mm -hmm. with relationships in terms of standing up for your own boundaries of what you are happy and not happy with. Um, and also mm -hmm. it means that the other person gets instant feedback as to whether something, whether you find something good or bad. Because sure. if, if I tell someone, hey, remember that thing you said last week? Well, I felt this way about <laughs> yeah, it. Like, what? what are you talking about? It, like? <laughs> it's, a little bit, it's a little bit hard to train you as my friend or my partner or something else, right? It's a little bit hard to train them if you're giving them feedback a week after the event. Whereas if they yeah. do something or say something and you're like, oh, that's the thing. Can you please not do that or say that? Because it has this effect on me. 
Mm. So I suppose then they get yeah. the anxiety as well. They're like, all right, they said they're yeah. okay. They always do this, but they're not. And they're going to be waiting a week or so. And they're going to come back with this long paragraph of text. And oh, Jesus Christ. Exactly. <laughs> and if you can say you're not okay when you're not okay, that actually builds a huge amount of trust in relationships mm. because yeah. it means someone can ask me and they can trust my answer. When I say yes, sure. they can trust that I mean yes. And when I say no, they can trust that I have a good reason and that I actually mean no as well. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but it, it all comes down to tr training how to do that uh, properly in, in the moment in the relationship. Sure. And that's what a lot of people have, have trouble with.